So if you're just getting started with WordPress, one of the first things you're gonna wanna learn is how to create a blog post. And that's what today's class is all about. Today I'm gonna to show you how to title your post, how to create some content, how to put some pictures in your content, how to create a featured image, and even how to schedule your post to show up at a later date. That's all coming up next on PCClassesOnline.com. Hello everyone, welcome to today's class on how to make your first post in WordPress. So when you first log into your website, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see what's called your dashboard. And your dashboard's gonna look pretty much just like this. Now I've got a pretty wide monitor, so you may only have three columns instead of four, or you may only have actually two columns. You might also have some different widgets sitting here than what I have, depending on what theme you're using. For this demonstration, I'm just using the basic 2015 WordPress theme that just comes right out of the box when you install WordPress for the first time. So if you are using a different theme, it might look ever so slightly different, but all of the options that I teach you today are gonna to be basic WordPress processes that you can do with anything that you're using no matter what. So let's jump right into this. The first thing you wanna do to create your new blog post is to go over to the left side and to hover over the word posts. And when you hover over the word posts, there's gonna be a little fly out and it's gonna give you these four options. And the second one is add new. Now, before you click that, I wanna show you one other option, another way to get to add new, and that's just by clicking posts or all posts. If we do that, you'll be taken to a page that shows you all of your blog posts that you have so far. And if this is your first attempt at a blog post, you're probably already gonna have a uh, demo post called Hello World, and I'll show you that now. So if you click on all posts, it's gonna take you to a list of all of your posts. And there it is, Hello World is your first post. So before you jump into this any farther, let's take a look at what our website looks like so far, having not done anything at all. This is the 2015 WordPress theme right out of the box. And here is what it looks like so far. Doesn't have a lot of style or personality, but it has the first post right here, Hello World, Welcome to WordPress is your first po post. So we're gonna come back to this throughout today's tutorial and watch it develop as we put more options into this post. So for now, we're gonna go back to our editing side and to start a new post, we can either click add new up here at the top or we can click add new over in the sidebar. Either one will go to the same place. I'll click add new up here at the top and we are taken to the basic blank WordPress blog post page. And again, no matter what theme you're using, it's gonna look pretty much just like this. It may have a couple other options down here underneath, but for today's lesson, that's not going to matter. So let me give you a really quick overview of the page. At the top is a field where you would put, you guessed it, your blog post title. And then right here is where you would put your content or your text and possibly some pictures if you'd like some pictures in your, in your post. And then over here on the right is this little publishing area where you can save as a draft if you're not ready to publish it yet. You can publish it for immediate public viewing, or if you click this word edit, you can also choose what day and time you would like this post to become public. And we'll go over that at the very end. Under here, there's an area called format, and this is gonna vary quite a bit depending on which theme you're using. So for today's purposes, I suggest that whatever it defaults to, just leave it there and then based on the theme you're using, you can learn what these other options would be. The next area is called categories. And when I was preparing for today's lesson, I was creating some categories that you could choose. And I was thinking about if you had a blog about cooking, you could have different options like chicken or beef or vegetables or that type of thing. And so I created a category called chicken. Then I also created one called blog. The point of a category is to help separate the different topics that you write about so that readers can choose a category that's interesting to them. And so you'll want to think through your categories and make sure that you make them in a logical order so that it'll help people find the content they're looking for. So in this case, we're just gonna 
click blog now chances are you probably don't have a category called blog yet so all you need to do is click add new category and type the word blog right here and then click add new category and it will automatically add it right here and check it and then you can uncheck anything else that you don't want checked for example in my case like chicken <laughs> so then down here below categories is tags and here these are just smaller ways to group things together by general topics so you could put anything in here in here for example if this is about cooking you could tag it chicken you could tag it poultry um, you could tag it anything you want that would help further identify what these top what this topic is so that people could find it based on the tags later and then you can click the word add and it will add whatever tags that you want to do and then down here is featured image we'll get to that in just a moment so let me go back up to the top and we're going to start by entering a title so i'm going to call this simply my first blog post now you can call it anything you'd like in fact i highly recommend actually that you write your content first and then come back and give it a title because when you get all done with your content chances are you'll be able to come up with a better title based on what you wrote so i recommend that you do that so the next thing you want to work on after you've given it a title or or even after you've come back and changed it later is you want to work on your content here so just like in word or pages or whatever word processing program you use you can just type in here anything you'd like. Now I've got some demo content that I'm just going to go ahead and paste here now. Just a bunch of uh, lorem ipsum uh, junk here that we can fill it in with for now. And just like I mentioned before, these features up here like, like bold and italics and so forth work just like any other program you're used to using. So you just highlight something and then choose the option here of whatever you'd like. And it works just like what you're used to. You can also change the color of different fonts or, or different words. I, I recommend that you don't get crazy with that, but that is how you could do it here as well. Again, just like you would any other program. So I'll let, I'll let you play with that on your own. But next, I want to show you how to add a picture to the content or even multiple pictures if you like. So it's really quite easy. What you do first is you put your cursor where you would like the picture to be. For example, let's say you'd like the picture right here before the first word. So put your cursor right there and click there. And then move up to the Add Media button right here. When you click on that, you're going to be taken to an, a place where you can choose to upload a file from your computer. And if you'd like to do that, you can click this button and then it will give you an option to find where that picture is and you can upload it here. Or you can go to your media library and choose from pictures that you've already uploaded previously. In my case, I've already got a picture that I'm going to use in my content here. So I'm going to click on this picture. And then over here on the right, it's got a few options that you can customize. For example, you can put a title of the picture and you can put alt text in here as well. I recommend that you put alt text in there. What alt text is, is simply what is going to show in case for some reason the browser that someone is using doesn't display your picture this will also help with a uh, search engine optimization so you want to put a, a title in there and for in this case i'm going to put my first blog post i'll even copy that and i'll go up here and put that here as well and you can put whatever you'd like there depending on your theme uh, you might want to use a caption for the picture you might not and you might want to put a description but for today's purposes we're not going to mess with that at the moment this next section here is called attachment display settings now this is kind of important because this has to do with how the words in your blog post wrap around the picture for example if you chose left as you can imagine the picture is going to be on the left and the content is going to be wrapping around it on the right centered is going to be centering the picture and the content is going to be below the picture and then right is going to be putting the picture on the right and the text on the left so in this case i think that left makes the most sense so i'm going to click that and then this next option says link to and then you have options of media file attachment page custom url or none in most cases for all the people i've worked with the only two options you would choose here would either be none or custom url let me tell you what that means this is referring to when someone clicks on that picture 
What do you want to happen? Most often, you don't want anything to happen, so you would choose none. However, if you wanted them to be able to click on a picture and go somewhere, in that case, you would say link to custom URL, and then you would put in the address that you would like it to go to when they click on it. So that's pretty straightforward there. In this case, I'm going to choose none. And then the last option is size. Now you get three sizes, the top one being a thumbnail, 150 by 150, medium is 300 by 230, and then full size, in this case, the full size of the original picture, which is 807 by 619. Now, you, again, if you have a different theme that you're using, you may have different options here as well. But for me, I like to use the picture at the size that it originally came as for the most part. So I'm going to go ahead and click that because I want to show you how to change that later. Click full size and I'm going to click insert into post. And in just a moment, you're going to see this picture come in here and it's pretty big, but I want to see exactly what it's going to look like before I show you the next options. So let me go over here to publish. And as soon as that publishes, I'm going to go over here to our demo page. I'll refresh and you'll see that this is what it looks like at the moment. So it's a very large picture and it's pushed the content below it. So let's say I want that picture to be smaller and I want the words to wrap around it. Well, let's go back to our editing page. I'm going to click once on the picture and it's going to give me these handles in the corners. You see that? And then it's going to also pop up with these alignment options. I'm going to choose a line left, which we already had, but because of the width of our uh, display on our website, it's not actually going to wrap around because the picture is so large. So what I can do is I can go down here to the bottom right handle and grab, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and make this smaller. And you see that how that works? Now when I did that, for some reason it automatically changed to no alignment. So I'm going to go up here and click align left. And you see now the text is starting to wrap around the picture, putting the picture on the left and the text on the right. So let's go update over here on the right. And then we're going to go back and look at it again and see what we think. We'll go back here, we'll refresh. And now it's wrapped around more like the way I had in mind to begin with. So you see how that works. You could also choose right alignment if you wanted to, to put your picture on the right side instead. So we'll go back here. Let's say that that's good. That's the way we want it. If you wanted to make the picture smaller, you would again single click on it and then you, you would grab the corner and move it to whatever size you'd like. And just make sure that this remains aligned left unless you want it aligned right or whatnot. But that's how you can put a picture in there. Again, if you wanted to put another picture further down the page, all you would do is click where you want the picture to be, go up to add media. For, these for this purposes, I'm gonna click the same picture again. I'm going, to, I'm going to go link to none. And if I choose alignment left here, it's going to be left aligned, but I can always change that when I get to the editor page. So I'm going to click insert into post. And there it is again. I will single click on it. I'm going to grab the bottom right corner. I'm going to resize it to something kind of small. And then I'm going to click align right. And as you see, it's now aligned on the right side. I'll go ahead and update that one more time so you can see it. And I think from there you can kind of get the general idea of how that works. Let me refresh the page. And there again is another small picture. And you can add as many pictures as you'd like throughout the post there. All right, so let's go back to our editor. And we've done that. So now let me show you what a featured image is. Over here on the right, all the way down on the bottom, it has an option that says fe set featured image. Now, some custom or, or premium themes handle featured images differently, but for the most part, uh, most themes, when you, when you add a featured image, what it's doing is it's putting a large image at the top of your post before your content. So let me show you what that looks like. When you click set featured image, it opens up your media library, library or in some cases, it might actually go to the upload files option so that you can upload uh, a different picture. But for me, since I've already got a picture chosen, I'm going to go back to the media library and I'm going to choose this picture right here. I'm going to single click on it and it's going to give me these options over here where I can 
create a title again. I can put some alt text in and so forth. It also shows me the pixel dimensions of the original picture. So that's also good to just be aware of in case you want to know how big it actually is. Now I'm going to go down and click set featured image and it shows me the image right here. And then when I click update, I'm going to go back to our page and refresh. And now you see that it's put a large image up here at the top along with our post. So now it's starting to actually look like something. So let's go back to our editing page again. And then the last thing I want to show you is how to publish this post at a later time. So what you do for that is you go over here to the right side under publish and right here the fourth option down you choose the option that says edit right here. And if you just choose any date that's in the future beyond today or even any time in the future it could be later on today if you like I'll choose May 10th and I'll leave the time. It's also in military time so if you're not familiar with that you get to learn a different way of counting time. And so you choose the date, the year, and the time, and choose OK. And now when I click Schedule, now it's not going to publish until later. So what's interesting is if I go back to my original page here, I'm going to click the Home button there, and now it's just going to say Hello World, and my other one's not going to show up until the date that I chose. So that's really handy for a lot of reasons, including perhaps when you're on vacation or when you are working on a number of posts at the same time, but you don't want them to all be publicized at the same time. So before we end today's class, I got one more thing I want to show you, and that's called permalinks. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix our schedule here to go back to being published today. And I'll publish. And then when we refresh our page, I want to show you this. When I click on the name of the blog post and go to the actual blog post page, look up here in the address line. You see that the URL or the address that goes to this particular post is training slash question mark P equals 20. Now, without going into a lot of nerdy detail, that's not a very helpful title when it comes to an average person looking at a page name. What I'd rather see is slash my first blog post or slash and the name of your blog post and fortunately that's really easy to change. Let me show you how to do that. If you go back to your editing page and go over to the left side in the left sidebar and you go down to settings. When you hover over settings this flyout comes out and you go all the way down to permalinks. Click permalinks and then right here the default setting will show similar to what you saw on the other page with the P equals and a number. What we'd rather do is go and click on post name. That way it will actually display the name of the post. So click the post name button right there and then click save changes. And then when we go back to our site, I'm going to click the title here to go back to the home page. And now when I click my title of my blog post, look how nice that is right there that comes up with the title instead of that crazy uh, P equals 20 or whatever. So that's how to do your permalinks and I highly recommend that you do that right when you first start with your new site. That way you don't have to think about it and it'll be a lot easier for regular people to read. Well that's all we have for today's class. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, you can support us in a number of different ways. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click like below this video. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified every time we come out with new content. And also we would love it if you would share our content with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for coming to today's class. Class dismissed.